Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. It's been a while since I talked about TG getting shit done. Let's fix that, shall we? So, Dark Souls. By the time I finish saying that title, you're probably thinking of any number of difficulty jokes. Or you're thinking easy modes, in which case I look forward to laughing at your rag again. Putting aside hack night memes, the background storytelling in Dark Souls is something to behold, as YouTubers like Smogtown and Vati Vidya can attest to with their many, many videos on it. With all that material, it's kind of astonishing that a role-playing game with the official Dark Souls license has yet to be forthcoming. Yes, I know about the Japanese game, but that doesn't count for this. Obviously because I don't speak Japanese. Yes, there's the board game. And yes, there's system adaptations. But I don't think either of those go far enough. Enter Dice Souls, TG's take on adapting the Souls series. While it is a work in progress, I think there's enough here to warrant mulling over. How does it hold up? Well, let's find out. Much like the video game version, Dice Souls' character creation is merely the beginning of the sandbox. We'll be exploring this with a foreign wanderer named G. The first step after determining their quest and memories, which should be tied to the campaign, is Country of Origin which also determines your starting equipment. In our case, we'll go with Far East, granting us a set of Eastern Armor, an Eito, a composite bow with six arrows, a dark wood gain ring, and an Estus flask with one charge. Second is Burial Gift, the gift of departure our undead had with them. We'll go with an Estus shard here, meaning our flask will have two charges. Third is Attributes. We have 20 ranks between seven attributes, with at least one point in each. After distributing them, we arrive at the following scores. Humanity 4, Endurance 4, Strength 4, Dexterity 5, Attunement 1, Intelligence 1, and Faith 1. This makes his Vitality out to be 14, his Stamina 9, and his Recovery 4. While it may appear simplistic, in reality, the larger part of the character pile is an advancement. This is of course done through Souls, each advancement raising your Soul level by 1 from its default of 10, and costs a number of Souls equal to the next level. When your soul levels up, you can either increase an attribute by one or gain a proficiency, dice souls equivalent to feats, which are capped by your attunement, in addition to extra benefits that are present at certain soul levels. I can say it's definitely replicating the character creation model being the first step shown in the game, but I could see the choices of build being a bit restrictive for some. I think you could do with an alternate freeform approach to armor or perhaps a free proficiency to give starting players a bit more identity. Dice Souls is a game with an old-school mindset, as it says. And while it uses a d6-based roll and keep, the system is less of a unified affair and more of a series of subsystems, in keeping with that old-school mindset. Given the subject matter, we'll start with combat. For starters, there's no real initiative system. All the PCs act, then all the monsters and or NPCs act. Distance is treated broadly as zones which I'm assuming for the purpose of this are akin to the battle zones in Unchained Heroes, albeit less detailed. It doesn't specifically go into what they mean by zones. Either way, much like in the video game system, your stamina and your recovery is key. Consider your stamina pool a group of d6 die for, for which you draw actions from. On a given turn, you may take one movement and one combat action. Movement is merely moving from one zone to an adjacent zone, unless you sprint to move across several zones at the cost of stamina. Attacks require spending dice from the stamina pool, spending a minimum stamina die based on the weapon and scaling in question. If not defended against, the attack hits automatically, subtracted from the target's armor value. The three means of defenses are blocking, dodging, and parrying. Blocking compares stability to the damage dealt, diverting damage to your weapon stability, which decreases by one on repeat uses that turn. Dodging spends one to three stamina dice, with any fours or higher resulting in a dodge, Parrying has the character spend one stamina and roll a number of die based on your weapon, comparing these results with that of the attackers. If you get more, you successfully parry. Spellcasting has its own sets of resources, but attack spells roll the resource spent. Furthermore, you may only have a number of spells prepared equal to your attunement. Much like with combat, spellcasting also has a minimum amount of resource spent on d6 rolls. This can vary by the spells used. Sorceries cost focus, miracles cost favor, Pyromancies use stamina, hexes use humanity, 
And lastly, spells modify potency based on the catalyst, with the exception of sorcery since that school is based on a flame that you level up. The mechanics themselves are certainly fine, and humanity acting as an extra effort certainly fits the theme. However, this is still a work in progress, and the way it's written is a bit... rough, to say the least. As I record this, Dice Souls is still technically in development, so it's quite possible that everything I say in this is rendered moot with some time. However, I think its current form certainly captures the spirit of its source material effectively. I understand the devs making it with an old school mindset, but I think they were a little too dedicated to that idea, with the game having a set of sub-mechanics instead of a core that everything springs from. Ultimately, it's still a foundation, and its ability to carry a campaign is going to be dependent on the player's and GM's familiarity with the video game. As such, the highest grade I can give it is Caution. I can't see running this with anyone but fans of the video game, and even that might present difficulties. Moreover, it's possible that the game is a little too dedicated to adapting Dark Souls rather than being an RPG. An understandable concept, but eventually one has to give way for the other. At the very least, you won't go hollow if you end your campaign early. 